Welcome back. You're watching Inside Politics. In case you're just joining us, we continue dissecting the latest political developments to play out in the course of the week. I'm joined by Arnold Maliba, Fred Okango, and Wakili Ishmael Nyaribo. Feel free to join into the conversation. Use the hashtag Inside Politics. Equally, we'll be opening our studio lines in the next 30 minutes or so. So feel free to call in. The number is 0732-142-590. 0732-142-590. You can equally call on 0732-142-311. Give us your take, your name, where you're calling from, and perhaps your thoughts on the issues we've been able to converse so far on the round table. Speaking of issues, I'd like us to shift focus to Marta's party hoping, because just this week, we saw Governor Kawira Mwangaza, the Meru governor, actually shift to UDA, at least publicly. We didn't see any proof of registration or membership certificate, but according to the public, the independent governor has now joined UDA. Let's listen in to what she had to say briefly. <coughs> Atuendi kujigamba ya kwamba kuna mtu ameshinda kuna mtu ambaye hajashinda. Sisi tunaenda kuleta amani, kuunganisha kila mmoja wetu, ku embrace peace, tuambie wenzetu ya kwamba sasa mwito ni mmoja. Na kama vile rais wetu anavyosema ya kwamba e, kazi ni kazi na we must give ourselves a sacrifice ndio Kenya iendelee na hata nchi yetu iendelee naomba pia kama mama kiongozi tuweke everything aside. Meru is bigger than any one of us. Meru is bigger than any other leader. Kwa hivyo ni ombilangu, tushikane mikono kila viongozi na watu wetu, tupeleke ujumbe wa amani, tuwapende wote ambao wamebaki kule nyumbani, tuseme kazi, ni kuendelea na kazi ni kazi, na mungu atapariki kazi ya mikono yetu. So it seems like Kawera saw the light, or Mwangaza saw the light. Anyway, she's joined the ruling party, UDA. As I mentioned, it's publicly, but no proof of registration. Luckily, we have a, someone from UDA, he might clarify for us. But let me start with Okango on this one specifically, because Governor Kawera is the latest governor to shift camp. She was an independent candidate, has shifted to UDA earlier on, and I think there's a case going on in court mm -hmm. all to do with the Isiolo governor, Abdi Guyo, mm -hmm. who shift camp from Jubilee to ODM, despite being voted on a Jubilee party ticket. Mm -hmm. Your concerns from Azimio when it comes to party hopping, because this is an issue that has been raised time and time again. Thank you. Uh, first of all, Jesse, for you to be elected as a governor in this country, you must first of all qualify to be elected as a member of county assembly. That is the law. And what is it expected of you? You must either be nominated by a political party or you can run as an independent. Let's take a case for, very briefly, for Kawira Mwangaza, who has now seen the light. Kawira Mwangaza was elected as an independent governor. It means, under the requirements in that instance, he went and sought the endorsement of at least 2,000 supporters who believed in her. He went and came up with a manifesto that is not tied to, U to UDA. He went and conducted campaigns on the basis that he is an independent <laughs> candidate, independent, independent thought, and is able to provide for the needs of the people of uh, Meru. Meru. Yeah. Today, she is telling the people that she has joined UDA. There is no proof of joining. There is no proof of her being issued with any certification that she is now a member of UDA. However, she has publicly demonstrated that she is supporting the ideology of UDA. She is manifesting the ideology of UDA. She is actually <coughs> pushing for the policy of UDA mm -hmm. by color, by action, and deeds. That is an express uh, contradiction of Section 14 of the Political Parties Act. It means the recommendation that the committee made in such instance, Kawira Mangaza, if she was 
a member of another party, she would be a candidate for deregistration. And therefore, it follows that she would be a candidate that would vacate office. Number two, we have seen Kawira Mwangaza and uh, my good friend uh, Guyo trying to associate with the ruling party, UDA. They are selling their agenda, their policy, and in some instances, even helping them in recruiting members of UDA. Mm. So they have actually joined UDA through the window. That's why in the recommendation of the NADCO report, the report recommends that in such instances, such people must be de-whipped right. from those positions okay. and follow the normal procedure by going back to the electorate to seek fresh mandate. But it is interesting in Kawira Mwangaza's case because the politics in Meru, I don't come from Meru, but I follow, as a politician, I follow politics keenly. You know that uh, the UDA members of county assembly in Meru, majority of them did not actually want Kawira for her leadership style or whatever reason. But to endear herself to those people, she must now go back and tell them, by the way, I'm now one of you. Okay. We are working with the president. We are pushing the same agenda. Never mind, her manifesto, in a way, was not aligned to the UDA manifesto. Mm. It was an independent manifesto. Maybe now. And lastly, Kawira Mwangaza is uh, threatened with competition from two people. One of them could be a CS. I don't know his intention to run. And another one is the deputy speaker of the Senate. And she thinks that should those threats actualize as an independent candidate, she'll actually be out of the UDA question mm. of that ticket. Okay. So to do that, mm. she must prepare herself and mm. get to that position before the two gentlemen arrive. So I think, and for Guyo, it is even interesting because Guyo was elected on a Jubilee ticket. Okay. He campaigned on a Jubilee manifesto. He campaigned on a Jubilee ideology. He is a Jubilee member. Today, he has actually violated the provision of political parties act, moved into a party that he was not elected on, a party that did not give him a nomination certificate, and today is telling people that yellow is brighter than red. <laughs> it is very interesting. Okay. I would want to see the decision in that petition, how it comes out. So away from the moral to the legal now, are they <clears throat> overstepping? You know, first of all, <clears throat> Uh, I know the struggle we have in the communication office at the party is that uh, whereas we are very responsible for what we say <coughs> and put out there, we are not responsible or for how people actually perceive it. The one part that is actually missing in this particular conversation is uh, the statement made by the Secretary General of the party. And allow me to read that particular paragraph. Okay. This is the paragraph that should actually have been splashed there before we brought in what Kawira said. Because it was in a setting where both the party spoke and then she spoke. So this is the second last paragraph of the uh, Secretary General's speech. He says that, whereas His Excellency Kawira is an independent elected governor, an independently elected governor is bound by uh, the provisions of Section 14 of the Political Parties Act 2011, revised in 2022, <coughs> Her support base that moves to UDA from today henceforth affords the party deeper foothold and entrenchment in the county as it constitutes <coughs> massive grassroots support, prim, uh, a massive grassroots support premium and a skill set in mobilization ingenuity. Okay. So you see, this is what no one really wants to see. That uh, Kawira Mwangaza's support base chose to come to UDA. She is an independent independently elected governor. Out of that respect, she joined them to the party out of solidarity. <coughs> she respects Article 14. Of course, there are some aspects around Article 14 that you have to appear to be actively championing for... Kanga will be ready to read that. But I'm just telling you, she was here in solidarity her with her support base <laughs> that has actually moved here. And secondly, she was here for purposes you know, when I come here as a friend, and th there is uh, the friendship, like for example, uh, Kanu and ANC. ANC is in, a, is in Kenya Kwanzaa. Kanu is in, a, is in Azimio. Mm -hmm. But all of them, for example, have got one party in uh, the Conrad Adeno Stiftung. He supports all of them. They work together. There are some ideals that they work together. That doesn't mean that the people in Kanu have joined Kenya Kwanzaa through the partnership they have with the Conrad Adeno Stiftung. You know, that's true, right? Yeah, that's true. You are the only party that are actually supported directly. They are, they've got a partnership uh, agreement with CAS as a foundation. Okay. 
So <coughs> she was there in friendship with her support base. Number two, she also was there to declare that in future, she will consider running with UDA. 2027. So okay. legally, she has not violated section 14 of the Political Parties Act. Again, <coughs> when it is a political question, we have to go back to the old mantra that in God we believe everybody else should bring data. And here the data we are speaking about is the law. <laughs> so, so long as she doesn't violate Article 11, it doesn't really matter how so, Kango or any other person feels about it. Let me ask you this. Has yeah. Goyo violated Section 14? He has not because he has not joined. He, he hasn't joined. He hasn't joined okay. the party, uh -huh. but he is a friend. He is showing solidarity with the party. And there's nothing wrong with a governor as uh, supporting uh, the, uh, a party that is working with the government of the day. But so, but, but, legally, but are there, are there these are not, these are not uh, legal questions. Maybe, maybe these maybe are legal moral questions. questions. Okay. And we cannot subject our politics to feelings, innuendo, and all those other <laughs> isms that these guys <laughs> are trying to yeah, yeah. You, <laughs> see, you can see why the UDA decided to settle on to help the, the party. <laughs> yes, yes. I listened to him try to dissect uh, uh, wrongly the uh, section 14, also referred to as Article 14. It's the same uh, of the Political Parties Act. Uh, initially, he said things have to be as legal as they can be, but when he arrived at this stage, he now said uh, there is a way one can interpret it here or there. But anyway, again, like he, he pointed out, politics is hard. And that's part of how you handle politics. But uh, Jesse, let's, for the benefit of, of your viewers, yeah. let's be very honest about party hoping. The primary intention of the country as a whole, or the political, uh, uh, <coughs> you know, uh, uh, grouping, is to ensure that we can build democracy. Democracy is built when there is arsenal on this side and money on this side. And both are given 90 minutes to play. That is democracy. Democracy is not when you take uh, Arsenal here, Manu here, and then you put a referee who is uh, belonging to Arsenal and you make sure that Arsenal scores. That is not democracy. Of course, that is bad play. That's bad game. Like Arnold said, when you do grassroots elections, you have what you call a party list. It comes from a particular party. And the IB is given that list. <coughs> and we know very well that now from the world called UDA, this is their, these are their people. Okay. From UDM, these are their people. And then from ODM, these are their people. Then you talk about other parties. So that the referee is aware, <coughs> what am I going to umpire? Mm -hmm. What am I going, how do I handle these 8 million people in UDA? How do I handle these 9 million people in ODA, or in Kenya Kwanzaa, for example? And how do I handle these other parties called minorities? Okay. So that the, 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 the IBC is aware how to handle that, plus, you give the citizens opportunity to see what kind of representation we have. Okay. So when you come to the house after that, and you decide, sorry, what I gave you, the name I gave you, you took to the party list to the IBC, does not matter. Now I like UDA or UDM, I'm now going there. It is not a decision for you to make. That is why the Political Parties Act will actually strip you of your position as a member of parliament or as a governor or as a senator if you defect midstream. Mm -hmm. There are methods that are allowed for you to use when you are resigning, you are, you are coming, you, you know, you are trying to cross over. Okay. One, you have to resign. You have to say, no, now I no longer belong to this party. And then, now, uh, the, uh, the house has to be made aware and then you have to be removed. Okay. Then you are so powerful like Kawera Mwangaza, and by the way, Kawera Mwangaza's case is different in the sense that she's an independent. Correct. I won't go there, but in terms of Guyo, who has gone into office mm. through Jubilee, mm -hmm. he has to be removed from Jubilee, and Correct. when you are removed from Jubilee, quickly you lose your seat. Now, since you are too powerful, you can still win it from the other side. What's the big deal? What's the big deal? There is no big deal. So, so, so I think, I know now here you, <laughs> you appreciate then that our country is still young in democracy. I still go back to that basis. <laughs> we are strong <laughs> theoretically. I, 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 okay. Just give me a moment. We are strong theoretically yeah, yeah. and academically. The practice. But when you talk about whatever standards, you know, he's using some, I don't know what, you know, uh, what rule he's okay. talking about. Yes, you know, global Jesse. commonwealth. No, no. Arnold, please Jesse, agree. Uh, let me to just, just uh, you will. I want but to support you. you will, yes, but let's uh -huh. say this. Yeah. When you say economy is good, 
like the way you have tried to reduce bad manners in higher levels and then you conclude that the economy is good, we must look at the practicality of these things. <coughs> Can I go by against, let's say, uh, the Honorable Deputy President and I be allowed the same leeway to, 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 to you know, compete and lose probably? Yes. If yes. I will be allowed to do that, then we are a democratic nation. But where you start at these elections because you are afraid... Uh, I will. Okay. 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 Allow me to respond to that in a minute. Just very fast. First of all, there is no requirement in law that parties must do elections in one day. There is actually no miracle in doing elections in one day. So it's nothing. He's kept on raising that and it's not required. But most importantly on the question of party hopping, it is important that we actually bring this to the home of why we actually have got the freedom to move around. In Article 38, it says that we should be able to associate without unnecessary roadblocks. You know, let me take you to the Bible. In Hebrews 11, 9 and 10, okay, time, time. it speaks about by faith, Abraham moved from one place to another, living in tents, looking for a city whose builder and founder was God. You know, <coughs> I stand with Guyo, I stand with Kawira Mwangaza and any other person who might really want to move from wherever they are. Because the concept of freedom, liberty, is so big that the book of Exodus is the premise upon which everything around liberty, freedom, and mobility is based. So out there, wherever you are, just remember one thing, that the patriarch of the three biggest faiths, that is Christianity, Islam, and Judaism, Abraham, moved from one city to another looking for a city whose now builder and founder is God. Now so, so, so man, <laughs> if you here, if you here is that city, if you here is that city, if you here is that city that you seek, okay, okay. please One move. second. I'm not going <laughs> to <laughs> preach <laughs> and preach until the chickens come home. But the fact of I'm the also not sure the Bible is quoted correctly because UDA is always a cowboy. Let's give him time. Let's give him time. Preach Arnold can preach. But the fact of the matter is, whether it is Guyo or Mwangaza, particularly for Mwangaza, we saw her appear in a scarf, yellow scarf written UDA, cap branded UDA. In that instance, she actually promoted the interest of UDA. She actually manifested the ideology of UDA. Okay, okay. By that alone, she has joined UDA, okay. though not registered. Paper, so yeah. it, it, it automatically follows that Mwangaza is UDA. For Guyo, I saw in one of the meetings, he was actually advocating for the recruitment of members into UDA party while he is a member of Jubilee. Okay. I don't want to go into the merit of that because of uh, uh, sub judice rule, okay, okay. but one, one thing but that Arnold must agree with us, me and Wakili, is that <laughs> members of uh, you, these are members of other parties, whether independent or uh, political party sponsored, joining UDA while not telling the people of Kenya that they are actually exiting from where they were openly mm. is just something like uh, yes, is, is applying yes, a okay. on yes, the bread. Quickly. Hold, no. hold on to your thoughts, no, gentlemen. Five seconds. We have to five cross seconds, over yes, to Emmanuel <laughs> Toh, is waiting on the other side of the studio to give us a uh, uh, with respect or in respect of what to expect in the coming week in terms of political developments. So things are heated over here. Help me. <laughs> yeah, definitely a very heated discussion you're having over there. And uh, just to quickly step in on that, uh, I recently spoke to the Registrar of Political Parties, uh, Ms. Anne Derito, and this is what she told me about that discussion you're having. And she said that... Uh, uh, RPP is yet to receive an official confirmation from UDA party regarding Governor Kawera Mwangaza joining the UDA party. And uh, she also said that until that happens, the law views Governor Kawera as independent. This is because the law does not provide for joining a party through a rally. That's what she said. So, <laughs> this, <laughs> this, is, this is from the Register of Political Parties, and maybe you will continue this discussion. Okay. But just quickly to what we expect in the week that is coming, is that Parliament is coming back to life after two weeks of uh, recess. Uh, the members of Parliament had gone out for the Easter holiday, and they're back with a lot of business ahead of them. One of them is the NADCO report. They're supposed to have a discussion. The Committee on Justice and Legal Affairs from the Senate and the National Assembly is expected to have a sitting uh, to try and unlock uh, that impasse uh, con concerning the nine bills that were presented to them uh, by the Speaker Moses Wetangula to try and uh, seek a way forward in terms of uh, uh, making the Nat National Dialogue Committee report uh, 
formal and making it uh, part of the law and uh, that will be coming up uh, they were supposed to have three meetings before the recess only one took place and the rest were not taking uh, uh, were not uh, flying because there was no quorums uh, there were other things that happened and we hope that there will be some way forward and something else that we expect is the impeachment of uh, CS for Health, Susan Akumicha, who has been on the hot seat uh, concerning the way she's handling the strike uh, by the doctors and the medics uh, in general. And uh, perhaps uh, we wait to see whether Mbakasi Member of Parliament, Mbak uh, Babo Wino, uh, will be getting his way and trying to uh, move forward with that impeachment that he's seeking. And the last thing is uh, Baba's way to Addis Ababa. And uh, uh, my friend, uh, good friend, uh, uh, who is there, uh, actually, Okango will tell us what Baba is expecting to do. Uh, perhaps Okango, Baba nafanya nini in this coming week? Okay. Well, to come again. I, I wanted to know what uh, Baba is expecting to do because he's supposed to submit his uh, uh, official bid for AUC, I think on 15th, but uh, perhaps uh, Okango can tell us what uh, uh, the leader of the opposition <coughs> side is, uh, expecting, is expected to do in this coming week. Okango. I think, I, I think uh, as you rightfully put it, uh, Baba is expected to submit his credentials officially, and you know this is an issue that is being driven by MFA and Baba's team. And I think it's until then that now we can start looking at the actual campaigns on mapping where he should be going and so on and so on. And, and I'm sure the people working on that will, will uh, submit that uh, program to, to, to the public. But uh, by and large is that uh, Baba, Baba is ready. Baba has been doing what he has to do. He's okay. ready. Okay. So <coughs> let's finalize. I hope that's in order. Yes, 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 uh, Jesse. We are now taking a short commercial break and we'll be back with your call as we get your views on what has been happening and what we are going to discuss in the second part.